I'd like to invite um, Peter Matiasic, the president of the European um, Youth Forum, to come up and give us his take on these findings and also the um, wider picture. Take a seat, um, Peter. So, uh, yeah, both on this and also on, on the wider picture for aspiration uh, and feelings about, about the digital future amongst European youth. First of all, what did you make of that? I mean, probably the most striking findings, the north-south divide in Europe in, in terms of the jobs of um, the future, and also the reluctance in some countries, including this one, to pursue a job in the field of ICT. Thanks a lot. It's great to be here. Um, yeah, I would say the most striking point that was mentioned is the fact that not only the Southern, but also the UK, uh, UK, Spain and Italy are the ones who are not very optimistic about the future if they live with their parents. And this is something we tend to forget. We tend to forget that in order for young people to really thrive in a society, they need to feel that they have the opportunities, but they also need to be autonomous. So the key needs to be about focusing, yes, on education. We've been speaking about that, and we will speak about that more, about employment, creating jobs, quality jobs, quality education, but also on the element of transition between education and the labor market, which is when then the internships come in and all these. So I think it's, it's very important that young people are very aware, and unlike the survey that we had here, where it said that the most people thought uh, among you that young people will have a better life than their parents, I'm one of those who was not agreeing to that, because in the European Youth Forum, the young members that we represent, they all feel that we are willing, and we are mobile, and we are willing to take on the opportunities. However, in practice, our life will not be better if you look at comparatively to what our parents have. Mm. If you look at the pension schemes that our parents enjoyed, if you look at the credits that our parents were given loans to be able to yeah. get, uh, you know, accommodation and, and of course housing. The, the youth unemployment figures um, exactly. in, in their 20s is a, bit, is a big part of that. I wonder, though, whether there is, um, uh, whether there is an awareness, though, that, that the nature of work is going to change. And, you know, Michael set out that very clearly. Uh, is there enough awareness that, that you know, young people will have to rethink their career aspirations? And clearly, parents are very influential. But many of us will not end up doing anything like the jobs our parents did. Yeah, there's, there's, it's an interesting mismatch also between how people people react, how young people react. On one hand, they are a bit non-satisfied that they do not necessarily have the same rights, the same protection that others were given. The social welfare state does not exist to the same extent as it did a couple of decades ago. Nonetheless, they are willing to take and make sacrifices. Young people in Spain and Italy, even though they are forced to move and be, uh, be mobile, they are willing to take that risk. And that's also something that the survey clearly showed. Young people are willing to move if need be, to acquire jobs. Mm -hmm. Young people are acquiring new skills in different settings and usually also outside of formal education. And I think when we talk about education, I would like to talk more about knowledge because knowledge is the key that we need in order to then be prepared for the labor market and for the life out there. And you where you get that, that knowledge yeah. is usually in education settings. But a lot of times, language skills, um, communication skills, all those lists of soft skills that we have, you will get them in informal settings, in settings where you will not get it certified that that's your knowledge. So my big question for this audience is a bit, some of the skills that people need in terms of ICT skills, in terms of coding, most likely at the moment, they are getting those skills elsewhere, not in education, not in the recognized education. So getting a diploma in coding is not actually an option so much at the moment. And normally, you will get those skills elsewhere. So you would, you would support all of that being integrated into the education system? Because let's face it, our education systems were based on the workers that were needed in the last major revolution in terms of work, which is the Industrial Revolution. I think you need to do both. You need to integrate things. And I'm very much on the same side of all those who say, well, yes, we need to better integrate business. We need to better integrate universities uh, and talk about how the labor market should look like, what are the needs. But at the same time, you should, you know, how do we translate that into practice is going to be key uh, so that we do not have different interpretations of that statement. Because it's then easy to just think about, OK, I'm going to look at education. I'm going to bring in young people. And this is what I need at the end. This is like kind of the Ford method of I need to kind of have cars lined up. And I don't want young people just setting up and I'm going to put them in that box. Oh, I need an IT specialist here. Oh, I need a driver here. I'm just going to move them through the education system to that. That should not happen. What should happen is say, 
if the young person decides and chooses to be in that position, he or she needs this set of skills that can be offered and can prepare that young person yes. for the life in I'm, the labor market. I'm just wondering, though, whether that is... Um whether, whether in, in the age we're looking at, where some jobs are going to disappear entirely, today we have hundreds of thousands of ICT jobs unfilled, that the kind of approach that you're looking at, is that a luxury uh, for a rich country like Germany? Uh, perhaps not so great if you're thinking about, uh, if, if you're looking at it from the, the southern European countries or indeed countries outside Europe which are lagging behind. I don't think it's a luxury. I mean, we represent young people from Iceland to Azerbaijan, from Portugal to Russia, and all of them have one thing in common. They all want better education. They all want better transition from education to labor market. They all want quality jobs. They all want opportunities. They all want to be supported in that approach, regardless if you're in Sweden, where a young person is actually paid to study, or if you're in the southern Europe, where you have to pay a lot for education. So the needs of young people are the same. The setting and the frame is different. So we need to look at when we are talking about digitizing EU, we need to look at some of the concerns that young people are raising as well. They want to be profiting from the digitizing. However, if you're in Germany and you don't have free Wi-Fi, uh, the internet here is not always very accessible, nor is it very cheap. So how are you going to create the opportunity for young people to innovate, to be uh, as, you know, creative mm. as Estonians can be where they have the possibility to just use that tool. So there's still certain barriers okay. that uh, we need to take Are you saying care of. that the emphasis should be on knowledge rather than employability? Yes. You say that. Okay. Actually, I'd be interested to see whether you agree in this room with that or not. Um, would you agree with uh, the point about the emphasis needing to be on knowledge rather than employability? And bear in mind all those sectors, all those ICT jobs which are unfulfilled. So let me just ask you, if you raise your paddles again, um, let's see, which side should we say? So if you agree that the emphasis should be on knowledge rather than employability, i.e. you agree with uh, Peter, then put the mirrored side to the stage and hold it up, and black side for everyone else. Um, knowledge that would be deployed for getting a job, of course. Okay, yes, not, not just knowledge for the sake of it. Knowledge, uh, but the emphasis, in, in terms of the search for a job, the emphasis should be on knowledge rather than employability. So you are a little bit skeptical, thank you. So most of you in this room agree. You have them on your side, Peter. Uh, That's good. Well done. But, and yet there, there is this essential job, though, that, that I just wonder whether yours is still an ideal vision rather than one that is rooted in the realities of the labor market. Well, there are different approaches. On one hand, there's thing that we fight for, and as young people, we believe in the right to decent work, and we want to ensure that that happens for everyone, uh, and including we want to have the same opportunities our parents had. Having said that, we are also very realistic in our approach, and as I said, young people, and myself, you know, I was just doing what I could and searching for opportunities what I could. Uh, young people today are the ones who are carrying the biggest burden of the economic crisis. They're yeah. the ones who are jobbing constantly, jumping from one unpaid internship into another. They're the ones who are creating innovative ideas. And on one hand, yes, you could say, well, you know, as Chinese say, in all uh, crises, there's an opportunity. And young people have been very much using that opportunity. And if you see where the energy is and the interest from the survey, it's in the South. Uh, the interesting point mm. about uh, what I found most striking in the results of the survey was the, the wish to engage in a startup or in a business in the ICT sector. Um, and in Spain and in Italy, there was very high interest. While the opportunities for doing that are not necessary there, the state's framework, the legal framework, uh, the social incentives are not necessarily there yeah. at the moment. However, in countries like UK or the Netherlands, there was very little interest, even though the regulatory framework is different, is more encouraging. Yeah, it's a very interesting set of findings. Can we just get a microphone to Michael Osborne? Because, Michael, I'd be interested um, in... Is there a microphone somewhere near you? Can we get one to Michael at this side of the stage? I'd just be interested to, to see whether you think, just hearing Peter's assessment of, uh, if, as far as it's possible, to look at aspirations across Europe, uh, to what extent they match with the, with the picture of the labour market of the future that you've drawn? Well, so I agree with your assessment that getting ICT skills in particular into education in some form is crucially important. I know within our own university we have a great deal of difficulty getting students at you know, an appropriate level of familiarity with software for the jobs that we're ultimately trying to equip them with. So I, I think these are crucial concerns. 
Um, as to the broader emphasis on knowledge at the expense of employability, I, I mean, as a researcher myself, obviously I would like to say that you know, we should be focusing on the foundations of knowledge and advancing that, but ultimately the labour market is moving so quickly, I think we need to be training our students with one eye on what is happening to make sure that they are equipped to, to meet those demands. Yeah, okay, so, so one eye on employability. Peter, would you say you are sceptical about the, ab about the extent to which business and the needs of business should drive what policymakers decide in terms of you know, shaking up skills, education systems? That's a tricky question. Um, Especially in the presence <laughs> of some business no, leaders in the front row, perhaps. No, not because of that. But I think there's always inherently, and that's not necessarily my personal opinion, but there's a kind of uh, opposition between what some people feel that they're the, the rights framework uh, and what they should have. And it's not necessarily as an entitlement, but in certain basic principles. And then, you know, should it be your choice of what you want and or should it be something that is driven by someone else? Of course, at the end of the day, if you're in a free market, you will know what you need in order to get there. So you will be willing to take that step, but it cannot be forced upon you. So that for me is a subtle difference where young people should be given the options, should be trained properly. Um, and of course, business should help mitigate some of the barriers that we have at the moment to enter labor market mm -hmm. and to make sure that it doesn't happen like two years ago or even last year where a lot of jobs in Germany were not fulfilled because of the lack of skills in terms of ICT or, uh, or digital skills by the, uh, by the people that were looking for jobs. So of course there's, there's a middle ground, but I think in the end of the day for me it's very important that we offer young people the opportunities and I think digitizing EU is a way forward as long as it's gonna tackle different elements. It needs to tackle what uh, um, Chancellor Merkel was talking about, also the access to the internet, because that's the basis, and also the concerns that young people have in terms of the protection of their rights when yeah. they're online. Yeah, and it's such an uncertain and difficult time. Um, we shouldn't uh, understate that in any way. Um, thank you very much, um, Peter, for that.